everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, December 26, 2016 through Sunday, January 1st, 2017. This is the last week of the year 2016 and we're getting ready for a whole brand new year and a whole brand new energy. You'll want to make sure to tune in to the January 2017 monthly angel card reading that will be up very soon as well. For this week's weekly reading, we're going to be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, is going to be from the Angel Tarot Deck by Doreen Virtue. So let's take a look at your stones of choice before we get into the astrology for the week. Okay, our first stone of choice is Beautiful Amethyst. Now, the amethyst, of course, relates to the crown chakra, and this is going to connect you with higher wisdom and knowledge. Your second stone of choice is this beautiful rose quartz heart. The rose quartz is going to relate to the heart chakra and this is going to connect you to inner peace and wisdom. And your last stone of choice is going to be this beautiful amber sphere and this is going to relate to your solar plexus chakra and it's going to connect you to your sense of power and your sense of confidence. So again your stones of choice are the amethyst, the rose quartz, and the amber sphere. And I think I might have said wisdom for the rose court, so I apologize. Let's say inner peace and unconditional love. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the astrology of this last week of 2016. It's really quite, quite a pow powerful week, astrologically speaking. We start out on Monday, the 26th of December with Jupiter opposing Uranus. Now Jupiter is the planet of expansion and growth and it rules our belief systems. And it's in the sign of Libra, which is all about relationships, partnerships, connecting to other people. And Uranus, which is a planet that deals with the higher God mind and higher vibrational energies from higher dimensions, is in the sign of Aries, as it has been for quite some time. Uranus is a slower moving planet. It spends seven years in each sign of the zodiac. So uh, it's been in Aries for a little while here. And Aries, of course, is a sign of new beginnings and independence and being self-sufficient. And, you know, it's, it's that, that first sign of the zodiac, which really indicates um, a fire and inspiration to move forward. So now these planets are opposing one another on Monday. And whenever we have planets opposing one another, the energies usually play out with relationships with other people in our lives. It plays out with, with us versus other people or us even versus maybe circumstances or situations. And again, here we have Jupiter in Libra and it's opposing Uranus in Aries. And so I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of growth that's happening as a result of connecting with others. I feel like, you know, we're, we're paying more attention to relationships, whether they be romantic relationships, friendship relationships, family relationships, even working relationships, or just relationships that we have in our everyday tasks that we do, you know, coworkers, people we meet in the store, etc. I just feel like we're being more consciously aware of those relationships. And we're really going through a lot of growth and transition and uh, expansion as far as our, our, our soul growth and our belief systems about what that means to us. Now, the other thing that pops in is that 
because Uranus is that higher dimensional energy or that God mind energy, I feel like we're really starting to maybe understand more of the connection of our relationship to our own higher selves or to, you know, God source energy universe. But really, I feel like this is us expanding our concept of that we're not just an ego mind. We're not just, you know, uh, an ego with thoughts and judgments and beliefs, but that we have a whole different aspect of our soul. And so we're, it's like Jupiter and Libra's partnerships, right? So our belief systems about partnerships. And so this is expanding us into a higher belief of partnering with ourselves, with our higher self, or partnering, again, partnering with the higher energies, the higher dimensional energies that can expand us and assist us um, in merging with our higher truth. And that's what I really think that this Jupiter opposition Uranus is about at a higher level. But again, you know, on a, on a third dimensional level, I feel like there's going to be a lot of things with relationships that are coming up. And again, our, our truth and our beliefs and the way we think about that relationships is expanding and changing. Now on Wednesday, the 28th, we have the Sun in Capricorn, and it's coming together or conjuncting Mercury, which is now in retrograde motion in the sign of Capricorn. So, you know, that, that aspect by itself is really good for uh, business, you know, working on, on projects related to business or career. Um, it's really good with, uh, you know, doing tasks or making you know, making lists to complete certain things or what, you know, think about what our goals are. Not just about doing. Capricorn does like to do, but because Mercury is there and it's retrograde right now, it might just be that we're thinking about what our goals are. We're thinking about what our, you know, ambitions for the future are, future is, what we want to, you know, do as we move into the new year. Now, it's also going to relate to communications, communications with people on, a th on an authority level or us communicating at a more authoritative level as well. The other thing that's happening, which is really important on Wednesday the 28th, is Saturn is coming together in a square aspect, which is a challenging aspect to Chiron and Pisces. Now, this has been building up all month. And this is only the first time that Saturn is going to square Chiron. Actually, as we move into 2017, it's going to connect uh, again in May and November. So this is the first time that Saturn and Sagittarius is making that challenging square aspect to Chiron and Pisces. Again, the second time will be May of 2017, and the third time will be November of 2017. Now, I will give you a little bit of what I think this is about. But also know that I did a Soul Reflections video under my YouTube channel under Colleen Lemma that specifically talks about Saturn, Uranus, and Chiron and how they are coming together um, in December of this year and May and November of 2017. So... Uh, you know, one thing that happened last week in our, the, our last week weekly reading was that Saturn exactly trined Uranus, and that also happens three times. It happened for the first time last week, it happens for the second time in May, and the third time in November, just like Saturn squaring Chiron. So that's a really important astrological configuration um, that you will want to pay attention to uh, in the months ahead. But Saturn, of course, is about manifestation. It's about third dimensional energy. Saturn's also about our lessons. It's considered the planet that rules karma. And Chiron is considered the wound, the wounded healer, uh, the shaman, or where healing takes place. Now, because it's in a challenging aspect, um, I can say that this is about clearing out old karmic patterns, clearing out old karmic wounds. And again, we've been feeling this um, come to a head all this month. And I feel like this time may be the most, um, uh, what do I want to say, intense time for it. I don't know if I want to say critical, but the most intense time. Um, although, you know, May and November 
I'll have to look ahead when you know we do future videos and and see you know are these planets moving forward are they retrograde but I really feel like we've been really feeling this one and especially because this is the last month of a nine universal year which is that time of the closing of a chapter in our lives as a humanity and we're really you know been doing a lot of healing and releasing and purging on a lot of levels physically emotionally mentally and spiritually um, for all of this year but especially I feel like it, you know in these last few weeks now on Thursday the 29th and for some of you depending on where you are in the world this could be happening very late on the 28th but on Thursday the 29th we have a new moon at 8 degrees of Capricorn and so here we're starting to have this new beginning um, Capricorn is usually related to our destiny path our life path our goals our ambitions our career um, what it is we're striving for, what it is we're working towards. So there's going to be new beginnings in that area of our life. And of course, it's getting very close to the end of the month here and moving into 2017 with this. But even more importantly, on Thursday the 29th, we have Uranus in stationary direct um, placement. So in, in other words, it's going to direct motion. And again, we've been feeling this all month as Uranus has been slowing down. It's been heightening and intensifying the effects of Uranus. So Uranus, again, that higher God mind energy, that bridge to higher dimensional energies. It's like getting a download of messages, you know, or a download of healing energy or a, a download of um, intuition and, and psychic abilities. So again, you know, Uranus brings surprises, it brings unusual occurrences, it brings electrical kind of energy. So as Uranus is slowing down, you might be feeling some of these things. You might be having some trouble sleeping or you might be having bursts of energy and um, feeling like there's an electrical current going through your body or just, you know, having to watch for uh, unusual reactions from other people um, or things that are unexpected, unexpected surprising circumstances and situations. All of these things, especially as uh, we get towards uh, closer to the 29th, you'll see more and more of this happening. And then on Sunday the 1st of January, the very first day of January 2017, Mars is going to be connecting with Neptune. Um, and Mars is in Pisces, as Neptune is, which kind of waters down the energy of Mars. Uh, Mars is a fire kind of a planet. It's about action. It's about energy. But when you put it in Pisces, which is a water sign, again, it kind of waters down that fire energy a little bit. I like to call this the spiritual warrior placement, though. And especially as it comes in to connect with Neptune, this can definitely be the, the sign of a spiritual warrior, the sign of connecting to um, energies that deal with other planes of reality with your angels and guides in meditation. So, you know, I would say meditate, meditate around that day because other than that, you might feel a little ungrounded. You know, when Mars is connecting with Neptune, you might not feel like both feet are planted out solidly on the earth. You might have a little bit of a woozy kind of feeling, you know, or um, feeling, what do I want to say? Feeling um, even, even time might seem to kind of change a little bit so that there's not a really good grounded sense of time or being connected to the earth. So do what you can to meditate and connect spiritually, but when you're having to go out and about and do your everyday things, make sure that you're grounded. So, you know, wear a grounding type of crystal or stone or make sure that you're um, touching a tree or touching the earth or, you know, making sure that you're doing, you know, envisioning cords that are um, growing from the soles of your feet into the earth so that you stay grounded on that day. All right, that's a little bit about the astrology for the week. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cards and see. I'm kind of excited to turn over and see what the messages are going to be in this last week of this last month of the year. 
Oh my gosh, it's the Ascension card. This is Major Arcana, number 21. And this is really interesting, and talk about surprises with Uranus. This is the card that rules the month of December. If you go back and watch my December monthly angel card reading, I used this as the card that relates to the month of December. Um, because December is a 21 universal month. And this is the 21st major arcana, or the last major arcana, in the tarot deck. Now, in the regular traditional tarot deck, it's called the World Card. In this card, it's, it's called, or in this deck, it's called the Ascension Card. But you can see this lovely goddess here, and she's holding the earth in her hand. Now, the Ascension Card means that, of course, we are ascending. This is indicative of us moving to um, a new level spiritually. Okay, this is like the, the old, whenever you see the world card, it's like there, a chapter of your lives is closing or an aspect, um, you know, an aspect of, of how you're living or, or who you are is coming to a close. It's coming to an end and you're going to get ready for a new beginning. And that's what this card means. Again, ascension, you know, we're ascending to another level as we move into 2017, which is a, a different universal number from what 2016 was. We're now moving into a new beginning after this 2016 ending or releasing or purging or, or healing has been taking place. So, you know, there's a real merging here in this week. And with all the astrological and universal energies going on, there's a real merging with your higher self, your universal self, the God self, uh, merging with, with God energies, um, spirit energies, universal energies, period, uh, is what I'm seeing here. So it would be a really good idea to take some alone time uh, in this week, in this last week of the year, and do some meditation or self-contemplation or um, asking your angels and guides to assist you in this last little bit of releasing of the energies of 2016 so you can move forward into the new year with a clean slate. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second card and see what more information we can get. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. We have another major arcana, and this is major arcana number two, and it's called the higher self. Now, in the traditional tarot deck, this would be the priestess card, which, is, interestingly enough, is also about um, very deep, psychic, intuitive, healing, divine feminine kind of energies, okay? And just as the name of this card would suggest, the higher self, again, this is us getting in touch with the higher truth of who we are, our higher spiritual selves, our uh, higher universal selves. This is really merging with this divine feminine energy that the priestess or the higher self is. There's a lot of water here with this goddess in this card. The moon is up here which is a, um, definitely a goddess energy here. So we're definitely tuning into our deepest intuitions, our deepest healing abilities, our deepest psychic abilities of clairvoyance and clairaudience and clairsentience and claircognizance. And we're getting in touch with our feelings and our emotions in a higher way, you know, in a more divine way. And um, this is really about connecting with your subconscious as well. Um, so it really goes well with the first card, the Ascension card or the World card um, that we got. And it goes well with the astrological energies thus far, letting us know that there's a lot of this higher vibrational divine feminine goddess energies that we're connecting to in this last week of the year. Wow. All right. Let's see what the last card is. Wow, this is a beautiful card too. The Master of Chalices. I'm going to show you close up here. Can you see the eyes at the top of this card over the water? So here we have more 
water, more about the intuitions, our feelings, our emotions, the divine feminine, our psychic impressions. Now the master of chalices, this would be like the king of water or the king of cups in the traditional tarot. This really merges the best of the divine masculine and the divine feminine because the king, or in this, in this particular deck, the Syrian starseed tarot that's called the master, this is that masculine energy. The king is the divine masculine energy. But the chalices, or the cups, or the water, this is the divine feminine energy. Again, it's our sensitivities, our, our inner soul selves you know, our feelings, our intuitions. So this is really merging that divine feminine and divine masculine energy. And it's really, truly getting in touch with our inner truth on a deep emotional level. These three cards for this week are very, very powerful and all very much associated with, I feel, a, a very powerful goddess energy within us. Now, when you think of the King of Cups, I think of someone with strength and courage and confidence and leadership, but in a very gentle and compassionate and unconditionally loving way. You know, someone who's here to take charge, but in a way that helps to heal others, helps to guide others, helps to nurture others. And again, uh, I feel like this is qualities. Now, this could definitely mean that there's somebody that you're going to be meeting, you know, when you have uh, the king of cups. This could be uh, someone new that you're perhaps meeting who's perhaps a man, but a man with a, a very open and compassionate heart. But it also describes qualities within you, especially, again, look at the eyes above the water. I feel like we're really getting in touch with our deep spiritual truth here. And we're seeing ourselves maybe for the first time in our truth, in our spiritual truth, and the truth of who we are as we're connecting to our highest divine self, as we're connecting to the goddess energy of the universe, as we're ending the ch a chapter of our lives here in this last week of the last month of the year and getting ready to move forward. This is truly very, very powerful energy. Okay, let's take a look at what your special message card is, depending on your stone of choice. So we have the Angel Tarot deck here. We're going to give it a little bit of a shuffle, calling in our angels and guides, master guides and teachers. This one's popping up for Amethyst people. Okay, Amethyst people, you have a water card. Ten of Water, beautiful, beautiful card. It says, a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met and trustworthy relationships. So the Ten of Cups, it's almost like you can't get any better than the Ten of Cups. This is like all your dreams, wishes, and hopes coming true. Now, Spirit is saying it may not mean that they're all going to come true in this week, although you might have some wonderful, happy surprises in this week, but you're definitely moving into a time period where what it is that you desire is going to come about for you. This is about having good feelings. This is about connecting again to your deepest emotional self in a positive way. This is about connecting to family, and there's not, not just biological family, but spiritual family. This is about just being so submerged in happiness and joy and contentment, um, you know, that it's just, it's just the most wonderful, ecstatic feeling that you could possibly have. Um, I really get, get a sense that you're going to be connecting with spiritual family. So I feel like as you're moving into the new year, I feel like, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that other people are going to fall away, although I feel like 2016 there were maybe relationships that fell away or maybe they're in the process of falling away. But this is going to be you connecting with a higher spiritual family, your soul family, okay? But again, very, very wonderful card for your hopes and dreams and wishes coming true. For those of you that chose the Rose Quartz, Okay, let's give these a little bit of a shuffle and ask for Rose Quartz. Okay, so I'm just not feeling it or seeing it yet, so just give us a moment here. 
Rose quartz. Okay. Nope, not that one. Nope, let's try it again. Yep, it was that one. Okay. Interesting, this is the five of water. So this is emotions, but this is a little bit more tumultuous here with the emotions. And it says, things not turning out the way that you'd hoped, not seeing the positive in a situation, and crying over spilt milk. Now, I feel like there's been some tough times with you emotionally. I feel like there's things that are upside down and topsy-turvy. Um, and again, just as the card says, things that you may have wanted or expected didn't turn out the way that you wanted. So I feel like you're having kind of a confusing emotional time right now. But this is this is saying to not give up. You know, there's rays of light here that's coming down onto these cups and into the ocean where the cups are. And those rays of light are trying to shine some light on you and on the situation, letting you know that all is not lost, and that there's, there's still hope. You need to kind of allow healing to take place and calling your angels and guides to allow that healing to take place so that you can move forward um, in a more balanced emotional way and know that everything happens for a reason and that there's good things ahead. They're saying even though the three cups at the bottom of the ocean that have fallen over and spilled, there's still two cups left here. There's still two cups that are upright and that's where the light is shining in. So there's something here that maybe you're not aware of yet or you're not seeing yet, but there's some good things that are coming. Um, there's some balance that's coming here emotionally. I feel like we need to just pull another card really quick to get some clarification uh, for you as to maybe what to do or how to move forward. Okay, so let's look at this one for you. The Four of Air. So the Four of Air to me just says you need to take some time to rest. You need to just have some downtime. And it does say time to rest or take a vacation and allow more time before making a decision and meditation provides answers. So there, there is a need to take some time to yourself and just get extra rest and um, extra meditation again would be good for you and that's going to help to clear some of those tumultuous emotions and have you move forward in a brighter and, and better light so to speak. All right, for those of you that chose the amber, all right, so I'm getting all these mixed messages here with these cards, okay. Amber, amber people, no? All right, this one wants to fall out, so I'm gonna pick that one. Six of water, wow, everybody got a water card. The six of water says memories from your history or childhood um, issues regarding children and romanticizing the past. Now the Six of Water is about again connecting with home and family. This can be actually connecting with family members for you know good times towards the end of the year, it's the holiday season, but this is also about healing family issues from the past. Sometimes with the Six of Water or the Six of Cups, you're wanting to hold on to the past or you have you know it's either you're wanting to hold on to the past maybe like a past relationship that is no longer serving your highest and best interest um, or again family dynamics from the past need to be healed so that you can move forward spiritually in, in the evolution and growth of your soul and kind of release some sort of karmic patterns that maybe are weighing you down but Either way, this is a card that shows positive uh, forward movement and just feeling really good. So I feel like there, there are some times in this week, obviously, that where you're feeling balanced, you're feeling good, and you're connecting not just with family but with friends as well. And it's just a really um, nice time period here. And there's again, I feel like a lot of healing is taking place regarding past, past situations, circumstances, and you're just... You know, it may have been hard at the time, but I feel like you're getting more of a sense of feeling more balanced and feeling ready to move into a new energy and um, really looking forward to this new energy with hope and, and a feeling of, of well-being. So I hope you've liked this weekly angel card reading. Sending you all much love and light. 
sending you many, many blessings as you round out the end of the year of 2016 and as you get ready for a whole and brand new energy in 2017. So again, make sure and tune into the January monthly angel card reading. I'll see you there. And I'm sending you, again, many blessings of love and light to all. Mm -hmm.